As I said, we gave you so much content in part one of this video, we wanted to come back and make a second part. This is it. We're gonna dive even more into the cold plates, the CDU, the technology that makes Chilldyne really special in the liquid cooling space. All right, Steve, so we just got our new Chilldyne CDU and our imaginary data center here that we've mocked up. Uh, what's the first thing that I have to do? We got our power switch on, so we're live on our screen, and I, what do I have to do from here? So what you're gonna have to do, it's pretty simple, is if you just installed this in a data center, um, you filled up the CDU with water, go ahead and hit vacuum test. Okay. In a positive pressure system, you'd have to pressurize the system and wait a little while and make sure that it held pressure. Yeah. With the Chilldyne system, the leak test operation is automated. So okay. the first thing that happens, the CDU pulls a vacuum on the system, and then it's gonna shut a valve. How high of a vacuum is it pulling? It's pulling about 22 inches of mercury okay. right now. So, and now it's gonna hold for a second, and then make sure that the vacuum doesn't fall, that there's no major leaks in the system, and it passed. So, you've augmented a lot of the uh, complexity that's inside here away with a couple of buttons, but what if I wanna get in the details? If you wanna get in the details, press the service button, Okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. You can evacuate, like if you're gonna take a system down, you wanna suck all the water out of the server so you can ship them. What's under diagnostics here? Is there any fun information? That's just all the information about the details of what's going on in the system. A Little bit of condensation is okay. A lot of condensation means drips of water on the motherboard. Absolutely don't so want that. So we can that. control for that automatically here. Yeah, and our software has Oh, multiple. I don't even have to worry about it. It's you don't have to worry it. about it. Our software has multiple redundant systems to make sure that we don't overcool the servers. And, and I don't have to be here for this. This gets networked in, right? Oh, yeah. yeah you I can do an IP this address. Is a, this is an IP address. This is a web page. <laughs> you can be anywhere on the internet. The other thing for, for super brave people, we can go into advanced. Oh, okay. Okay. So we can do things like a calibrate, a flush, we I can see dose chemicals manually. Firmware updates on what, I gotta shut my whole data center down? No, and... no, you can just, you can do the firmware update while it's running. Okay. And so there's no, no downtime associated with the firmware update. What's manual dose, is that for? Oh, that's these guys. I yeah. know what manual dose is. Yeah, so we have our... Uh, it's our stoplight tanks. Exactly, our stoplight tanks. So we have two biocides, we have an anti-corrosion chemical. These are all added automatically as needed to maintain the coolant quality control. We just wanted to make the system so if, if you forget to do something, um, the CD's gonna rat you out. Okay, so you can't hide from this as the, the, uh, the modern data center cooling technician. Well, so you got a lot of, lot of availability for configuration on the, on the front if you need it or if you're just simple, yeah. easy to go and run in there. That's kind of So cool. you can control the, the temperature going to the server, you can control the temperature uh, leaving the facility water system if you yeah. want to do heat reuse. Okay. Um, and you got all the nice little uh, relevant yeah. information. Relevant nice. information, little. How much liquid we've got in the reservoir. I see flow. Supply return, the yep. CDU flow. When we started this, we said, hey, this is just for reference. Don't worry yeah. about it. But what we're finding is customers want to know what all these numbers are. They want to know how accurate it yeah, is. Yeah, giving, giving the ability to get so, into it is really valuable for folks, especially if they Maybe they're just curious, or maybe they need that as a metric for something. It's important. All right, we're over here at the side of the machine. I'm here with Doug from Chilldyne to go over some of the architecture and uh, the interesting stuff in here. A lot of data center gear is usually really boring and kind of, eh, it's just another server, but this is uh, something else, actually. It's there's, really impressive. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Here. Yeah, it's not just a regular uh, server box. There's yeah, this is, this is definitely, it looks really complicated on the surface. You and I had a little bit of a chat earlier and I understand it more now, but for everybody else, let's just kind of start at the top and work our way down to where the action happens. Yeah. Uh, so this is the main vacuum pump. The way this, the CDU works is it pulls the fluid through the system and by pulling, creates a vacuum. And that's mm -hmm. why we have it on both sides. This is a liquid ring vacuum pump and the actual water creates the seal between the impeller which creates the suction on it and what happens is this continually spits out water and through mm -hmm. this this uh this cone here it's a fluid separator so we have air that comes out because this actual whole system breathes okay believe it or not and this is actually a 
a muffler and it's a condensate return. So we try to capture any moisture in the air that's breathing out of the system. Now we can skip down here to the, 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 the business end for a minute. It's pulling a vacuum on this manifold, right? Right. No, it's, well, yes, on this. The inside this, one. Yeah, the one on yeah. the inside. It's functionally, shapes almost identical for you guys at home. As we're pulling the vacuum on this manifold, how does that create movement of water through the loop? This is the main pumping chamber, and we call this the arm chamber. This is auxiliary, reservoir, and main chamber. And if you think of it, that these are the two pumping chambers. Think of these as a free surface piston that go up and down as it's pumping. So it's pulling high vacuum on these two chambers and low vacuum on the reservoir. When this chamber pumps, this is the main chamber, when it starts to pump, it'll actually pull this fluid up. And, and when it, you say pump, that's because this solenoid opens up and that's actuated by air. Right. This is okay. a uh, pneumatic actuated. That's the pss, pss, pss that yep. we hear when it's going. Exactly. These are the valves opening and closing through the cycles. Yep. So this valve opens and this puts a high vacuum over here. Right. Right. So when it fills up and it can't go any farther, then another chamber has to take over. And that's when the auxiliary comes into play and it starts to pump. This chamber empties through check valves into the reservoir. Then when this one starts to pump and it's full, this one is already set down here. This one starts to fill up. And as soon as it fills up, one valve opens and vents it. And that allows the fluid to go back into the reservoir. So it's constantly going in, 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 in. Just cyclically by opening and closing the valves on either end. So here, this main pipe here, this is the return from the server. This is the warm yep. water, warm or hot water. And it can go from here into this check valve or it goes across the reservoir or dumps into the auxiliary chamber. So this is where we bring in all the, the warm fluid or the hot fluid. Mm -hmm. In order for us to get that hot fluid, we have a pump inside our reservoir. There's a tube that goes up to these heat exchangers. These are liquid to liquid heat exchangers that hook up to your facility water. You can do chilled water or you can do a, a evaporative cooler or some type of way to take your heat out of the system. However, my facility is doing heat rejection. Right, exactly. Okay. This is the cold water out and that's the warm water return. So, okay, so that kind of demystifies it, right? Because we can see all the 3D rendering and all the 3D models on the website, right. see all the diagrams and stuff, but and then you see it and it's still confusing. But if you just take it and you follow the tubes and you understand that the vacuum's doing the work. The vacuum is the key. This pump is the key yeah. to the whole system, is, is creating the vacuum for the whole system. Yeah. Pulling the fluid through the system. Yep. It's uh, that, that tank and all the fun action gets But how do we get the vacuum on both sides is we have high vacuum on the auxiliary and high vacuum on the main chamber. We still maintain a low vacuum on the reservoir. And then does it ship like this? Do I get this fancy glass panel so I can enjoy it? We, this was only made for us to, to uh, you know, show off in the lab. Yeah. And, and, and it turned out every one of our customers wanted the clear cover. Well, yeah, if I'm buying this thing, I want to show it off. Right, and that's <laughs> another cool. thing with, with all of our tubing is all clear too. Yeah. So even if you have a um, indetectable leak, if mm -hmm. you see bubbles going through our system, you know there's some microscopic leak. And just like breadcrumbs, you follow that bubble back, oh, someone forgot to tighten the fitting. Yeah. Or there's a pinhole here. You can easily find that. You can actually watch a tech will go up and tighten a a valve or, or, a, or a clamp mm -hmm. and the, then the leak will stop. So some of the videos that we made, we saw bubbles going through yeah. there. We actually put those bubbles in there because you wouldn't see anything. It doesn't right, look like it doesn't look bubble. like, it, we couldn't see anything on our, on right. our demo table over there until right. we uh, did some did some bad things to those tubes. Yeah, right. <laughs> those poor tubes. We murdered so many tubes. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. We tubes. have more. Awesome. Well, there was another component up front here and we had actually previously touched on it briefly of our uh, stoplight container of chemicals. I uh, want to learn a little bit more about that. You got anybody who can help me out? Oh yeah, we have Mike's here. Mike knows all about it. He's an expert. <laughs> Let's get Mike in here. <laughs> Bring Mike in. I brought in an expert. You can tell he's an expert because he's got a lab coat on. This yeah. is Mike from uh, Chilldine. He's the resident chemist, I think. Is that yeah. what's your official title? <clears throat> I am the chemist. The chemist, okay. Nearly the chemist. <laughs> he, uh, 
we were chatting a little bit earlier here and he was telling me things that were way over my head and completely out of my wheelhouse about the cool things that go into the chemistry. Cause anybody who's ever run a liquid loop and like their gaming computer and stuff knows you gotta clean it, it's kind of a pain and there's things that happen inside of those that are not pleasant to deal with. But you've worked around that seemingly with this wizard's concoction of yeah. colored material. <laughs> yeah, we have a handful of onboard chemicals that we do have to ideally deal with um, basically bio bugs are the biggest problem we're dealing with. We have... And when you say bugs, it's bacteria, bacteria. and or algae. Okay, so it can be or yeah, both. And, and, um, so yeah, we're trying to keep those at bay. There's no way to destroy them entirely because that's just the nature of biology. And we have ways to do shock doses if need be. And then we also are uh, adding some corrosion inhibitors into the system. We have a series of sensors in the system uh, that are paying attention to stuff as it goes. And we have periodic dosing set up right now. And we have the ability to change the chemistry of what we're doing pretty simply from a user perspective. like hey, like biocide B is not working right. Uh, we can work with our uh, customers on that and we can swap it out for a different one very easily. Okay, so digging into that for a second, that's actually an interesting point that you've discovered through your research on this, that the water from California isn't gonna behave the same as water in Kentucky, for instance, and there might be a different yeah. kind of biome to it that creates different so the water we're bringing into the system is all very clean and filtered. We're yeah. running it through either RO or DI systems before it enters okay. the system. But what we've found is that in the context of any maintenance work or somebody undoing, you know, plugging in and unplugging a particular um, fitting somewhere, that's enough to introduce some particular uh, bacteria into the system. The thing they don't tell you when you're learning to be a chemist is that operator error is a huge problem. <laughs> like somebody will plug in a rack of servers that have been sitting for a month and quiet and they grew a whole bunch of bugs and suddenly you have a bloom inside your system. So we can hopefully deal with that before it becomes a tragic problem. Part of that I, that I like the most is it's a really hard problem to solve. Yeah. And I know if you look at it from like some sort of chemist point of view, it's like we got this system that's running warm. It's always being aerated because it's under vacuum uh, and there's always like fresh air pulls in and it's like a pretty ideal incubator. Do you have a card? I need a new pool guy too. <laughs> no. <laughs> I bet you'd be no, killer. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't do any pool side hustles. Okay. So, but it's a, it's a possibility. Uh, but yeah, these are just like tremendously interesting problems to solve and like because everything under vacuum, a lot of your intuition about how things are going to behave and work kind of breaks. Well, and also now for the first time ever in history, we have to bring a chemist into the data center because we're interacting with copper and yeah. stainless and plastic. A whole list of wetted and, parts. And, yeah. you know, I yeah. don't think anybody wants the job of a CPU cold plate scrubber for a no. server farm of 10,000 servers. Yeah, and that's the biggest issue you yeah. run into is likely bio, uh, biofilm growth. Because like, yeah. man, those guys get in there and they're not going to leave. You can get most of it out with chemistry. Cool. Never right. thought I'd have to have a chemist for my data center, but here we are. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, there's water's complex stuff. It's yeah. like all the life we're dealing with evolved in it. So <laughs> don't think it's going to stop. And we're making a nice warm pool of it. Yeah, we have a beautiful system to incubate with. Yeah. So. Well, cool. Thanks for, uh, yeah. thanks for the education on the chemistry, Mike. Totally. Happy to help. Awesome. So we've spent all day with Chill9, literally eight, ten hours with these guys, understanding how they went from rocket science to cold plates, and the results have been amazing. The negative pressure system is simply unparalleled in the liquid cooling game. No one's doing it. It's totally different, and it saves from some of the most popular fears that data center administrators have around leaks, around operational efficiency, and you can even put two of these uh, CDUs together for an HA environment. You can really engineer your data center in an intelligent way to handle the chips of, as we've seen today, but also tomorrow with whatever NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD come up with. These guys are ready to do it. We'll have links in the description to our paper, to Chilldine, to all this information. You got to check it out if you want to be up to speed on what's coming in the data center when it comes to efficient liquid cooling, no leaks, no downtime.